Hey everyone, welcome to Secure AF, the podcast all about cybersecurity. I'm your host, Teddy Underkoffler. Today I'm joined with co-host Donovan Farrow. What's cracking humans? As well as our special guest, Chad Clewer. Great to be here. Absolutely. We are happy to have you here. Today we're going to talk about how to hire and get hired in cybersecurity. But before we kind of talk about that, Chad, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure, you bet. I, I, I like to talk about myself. No, not really. I don't. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I, I come from a background of about 30 years in, in IT and information security. A little bit of time. Yeah, just a little bit. I, I, I kind of, I, I really started doing security stuff before it was cool. <laughs> um, that's kind of the way I look at it. It was yeah. when it was all the stuff that nobody else wanted to do. But it is really what that amounted to. Yeah, that's uh, hilarious. So starting there, you know, I, I spent 18 years in hospitals doing that stuff that nobody wanted to do. Um, wow. From there came out and spent another eight years communications. Um, now I'm working for ISC Squared in professional development. So I've kind of taken a step out of the industry and and worked to educate our our future. Yeah, that's that's great. I and again we've known each other for a long time, so that's interesting to. Uh, um, I didn't know that was like the official move. So um, talk more about yourself, and we appreciate that topic. Can you tell me um, before we get in the topic because I think that's important. I'm interested. What pulled you out of the court? I was still kind of corporate, but like to be an advocate because you've always been an advocate. You've always participated, and clearly that's a passion of yours. So. How kind of tell me about that opportunity and how how did that move and how has that been for you? You know, you're exactly right. Um, I spent several years uh, as a volunteer with ISC Squared. So I, I started out there, of course, you know, as a member when I earned my CISSP. Um, then I learned about their volunteer opportunities. I spent time going out to grade schools across western Oklahoma and and presenting materials that ISC Squared provided. Nice to uh, to present to anywhere between. Sorry about that. If I. You can so, give it this one second here. And then start with, I went out to Western Oklahoma. Whenever okay. So I, I went out to Western Oklahoma and uh, presented cybersecurity to grade school students, anywhere from fourth grade to really seniors in high school. And I'm going to tell you that was an experience. Yeah. Number one, kids terrify me. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> wrong with that. And, um, <laughs> what I learned is they're, they're really hungry to learn about that stuff. Huh. It surprised me. I saw a whole lot fewer eye rolls and a whole lot more people that were engaged in stuff. <laughs> Less people sleeping in your class than the prior class. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that was kind of my, really my first step into into kind of being a, a teacher or a mentor about that kind of stuff. Now, that grew into, I, I then wrote a couple different courses Yeah. Uh, for ISC Squares Professional Development Institute. Um, and then it grew into, um, I was asked to help uh, write the curriculum for the new Certified in Cybersecurity, yeah. which is a new uh, entry level. And, and I, I have to be honest, as I'm going through this, I'm like, you know, if somebody can make a full-time gig out of this, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that that is. And, 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 and somehow that ended up happening. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> magic, magic. And I had another question. Again, I know we're, who am I still talking about that, but I think it's important as as to even more qualify you to the, to the people listening and watching is I had, here's my brief experience giving a presentation. I, it was my kid's uh, second grade class. It was, it was pretty brutal. And then I also did it for my son who was five at the time. So it was like kindergarten class. It was for, kindergarten, first grade. And um, I, when I was like, couldn't really figure out how do I talk to these kids about something so deep and technical. And I was like, hey, does anyone know what a hacker is? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, they're bad. They're like, yeah, I got some booze, which is, and I was like, I was like, um, Anyone play Roblox? So it's like the biggest like kid game on the planet. It's like a two point two billion dollar industry. It's just like a whole bunch of Lego things, and you you they steal all the kids, uh, the parents' money to buy these fake things, and it's just it's insane. Anyway, so I told them that's what we do. We we help people that get scammed by hackers because a lot of those kids that play Roblox they'll give away their passwords or they'll have terrible passwords and their accounts get com like compromised. And people steal their stuff, like you know, they're because they have like a a little dog or a blue shirt that has their name on it, and uh, that was how I got through. So that was my experience. How did how did you present that to I guess the 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 older students? Like what was I mean, not in depth, but what was like the high level topics? You know, the real high level topics was, and, and it really the the one we had four different ones we were doing. The one I did the most was really about online privacy. Okay. And it was really more about think about what you're sharing online and what kind of stuff you do. I, I have to say the number one eye-opener I had was um, when I asked about, you know, how many people play online games, of course, and 
you know, we're, we're talking fourth or sixth graders, every one of them raised yeah. their hand almost. And, and how many of you chat with people you don't know on those things? Almost every one of them. And it's like, okay, this is a little scarier than I thought. Yeah. Um, but that, that, that's what really got me. But that's what we really talked about most was, was privacy aspects. We talked about a, a, a fake Facebook page. And, and yeah. here's some information. Think about this. You know, your birthday's on here. How can somebody use that for bad? How can, you know, here's a picture. Oh, we're on vacation. Check out the beach. Yeah. You know, how can somebody use that for bad? And the thing is, is they've never thought about how somebody could use that for bad. Hmm. And that was a real eye-opener to every one of those. That's great. Um, my favorite part is I think the teachers ask more questions than the students. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think the teachers learned more than the students. She's, she's like, yeah. so um, we're excited. If, if I had a text message that wasn't for me and I deleted it, is it possible to retrieve said text message? <laughs> You're like, I think that's a different class. That's a different class. So, yeah. Yeah. So going into the topic. So we talked a little bit about like, you know, going to the classes and educating students and subsequently the teachers as well. Um, so in that realm, how do you kind of encourage people to consider cybersecurity as a field to get started in? Because we'll just kind of start there. Like the field is kind of wide open. How do you draw people in and encourage them to consider this as a potential career path? And and that's a great question. And, and you know, for a long time, like I said, it, it was a job that nobody wanted. Mm-hmm. And is, that's kind of what I'm used to. And I, I'm still sitting here amazed that people actually <laughs> want to do this stuff now. It's like, oh, wow, okay, this is cool. Yeah. So so really, it's not so much going out and finding people that want to do it. That That's happening already, and that's cool. So now it's a matter of, so how do you guide those people into this career? And, and how do you help them grow in the career for somebody that has zero experience? Um, and that's really where that, um, I, I think that Certified in Cybersecurity was a great tool to do that, the new um, entry-level certification from ISC Squared. And, and I was really happy. We started working on that, and there was a, there was a team that was working on it, and, and every one of us said, you know, this would be really cool if this is going to be free um, because not everybody's going to pay what you have to pay to get your CISSP right. to yeah. do this entry-level training. And, and if we could make this free, that would be awesome. And they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. I, I mean, even from a business side, that's actually genius because that's what got people into the CompTIA back in the day. It was free initially, and then it became a thing, and then they started charging. <laughs> just, but also, it does get it out there because a lot of people, I don't know where to start. And I, I think even them as an organization, them wanting to provide um, learning and a place to kind of congregate with other uh, engineers and, and technicians, I, I think it's awesome. So I'm glad to hear they're doing that. Yep, absolutely right. And and when our CEO uh, offered to do that and actually made that announcement when she was at the White House at a at a cybersecurity, wow. uh, you know, some kind of cybersecurity meeting at the White House, and made that announcement that we were giving that away to one million people for free. That's worldwide. That's that's great. It's amazing. And half of those to the underserved community. Nice. So ha- half of those to to minorities in the workforce, and you name it. So um, it's a great program. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you honestly that the organization. We expected 20, no, we expected, uh, you know, a few thousand. Um, what we ended up with is in the first month, 25,000 people signed up for that. Wow, that's, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That was in the first month. Whoa. Um, I, I believe the latest count is close to 300,000. And I'm not looking at those statistics, so don't quote me on Miz. Uh, um, <laughs> but but it, it, it has been huge. Uh, and it's been a huge outpouring. How long has it been out? It has been out. We I think we officially launched it last September. That is crazy. It took off like crazy. I am absolutely amazed with, with how it's taken off, not just in the U.S., but overseas as well. That's fantastic. I was going to ask. You said it was worldwide, so that's, yeah. oh, my gosh, that's 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 insane. Yeah. Now, the important parts of that is the way we built it. And I'm going to tell you, I, I went into this thing as a CISO going, this is what I want my people to know. If I hire somebody yeah. straight out of college, straight out of whatever, this is the baseline stuff I'd like my people to know. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you about halfway through that process, my mind completely changed. I was about halfway through writing this course and realizing that, you know what, this isn't really stuff just that I want my security people to know. This yeah. is stuff I want everybody to know. Yeah. This is how security relates to the business. So... We, we, we might have had a chat a little bit earlier about the technical side and the non-technical yeah. side. And, and this, this is an entry-level certification, and it's a- absolutely meant for somebody who has no technical background. Now, if you have a technical background, you're going to be one step ahead in it because there are some technical things in it. Um, but 
those technical things are there, but remember, you don't have to score 100% to pass a test. Right. Um, so you don't necessarily have to know all that stuff. Thank goodness for that. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a straight <laughs> yeah. C, C student all day. Yeah. So that thing really <laughs> evolved. I mean, it, it absolutely evolved to, um, you know what, this is, this is great for everybody. So whether you're actually wanting to get into cybersecurity or you have to put up with the cybersecurity nerds, it's still a good place to be. Yeah, and um, I think it, always, it it almost sounds to me, it, it sounds like I need to take the test. Because <laughs> <But laughs> it almost sounds to me like it um, it's a good, because uh, what I always, when I go like on site and work with clients, it's really hard for me, for finance people, to talk to IT people. I swear they speak a different language. And attorneys, oh my gosh, like for them to get involved with that and understand like just nomenclature and how things work, I think that would be almost a good communication connector for other individuals in a corporation. Um, obviously, if people want to get into cybersecurity, but that's, that's a, man, that's got some depth to it. That's awesome. Yeah, you're Congratulations. You're exactly right. And, and I'm going to tell you, my, my next step and what I really want to do with it next yeah. is I, I want to take that and turn it around and, and rewrite that course and aim it at executives and board members to to help them understand more about cybersecurity. No, and yeah, we, we hear that constantly. That that's a battle. I guarantee, I fought that battle. You know, between the security people that says, "Hey, my board, my executives don't understand me." Yeah, and the board members and the executives are going, "Why can't you speak English?" <laughs> right. Um, and it just kind of ends there. Yeah. So if if we can bridge that gap and start bringing those two groups closer together. That's where we really need to be to, to better secure everything. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because a lot of board members are like the robots talking again. What is he? What is he saying? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> what, just budget. Oh, I understand money. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> that seems like a lot for this. Wait, firewall. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't, aren't you the CEO here? <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can ask Teddy and 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 the podcast. Like, hey, we need some stuff. I'm like. No. <laughs> See, I, like, I nailed it perfectly because I know how that is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just in character. Got it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. So that sounds like a fantastic place for people to start, either if technical or non-technical. And so from that point, where would you see people going from there? So they get the certification or do they get other certs as well? Or are they able to just try and find different roles and opportunities or... You know, I'm going to say look for the opportunities you want. Um, but I'm going to say one thing about certifications, and it really has, has nothing well, it really has nothing to do with my current employer. Um, I am the first one to tell you you don't need a certification to get a job. Um, with this last one excluded, I never had a certification for any job I had. Really? Never had a certification, never had a college degree. Now, I'm not telling you that's the best way to go. Well, right. I, I, I kind of did things the long way. Yeah, yeah. I did things backwards. Um, you know, I never had a degree in anything. I, you know, graduated high school, went on to a little bit of college, and I was terrible at it. Um, <laughs> and and went backwards. Uh, you know, I, I did, like I said, I did all this the long way. I did it the hard way. And then once I got my, my official job in cybersecurity, which was the, the free, you know, I've always had IT jobs. I was always the one responsible for security stuff. Yeah. Moving forward. But I I never had a certification degree or anything else. It was all figure out what we need to learn. And then after the fact, I turned around and, and did the, the bachelor's and master's degree um, after I got my CISSP. So I didn't build up from the baseline and move up. I, I kind of went for the CISSP and worked my way backwards. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that. And, and, and that was the whole point of that story. Is yeah. I really don't recommend really that. And what people, uh, again, I, I was joking in the uh, <laughs> the. The uh, organization I was invited to yesterday was I had a good talking when I was like, "Hey, I'm technically super old," and when I say that, I was like, "I'm not old. I did get my under forty. I was bragging about that." I said, "But, but when you're talking about the way you did it, it's kind of the way that I did it back when I had my first IT job, and this is going to be sound hilarious. I was I had my first IT job. I was building computers. It was 1998. I was putting them together for like 20 bucks. So that was the craziest thing. People paid me to do that, but the the world saw like. IT is like plumbing almost. And no one, no, you're right. No one wanted to do that. That's dumb. No one, that's, that's computer nerd stuff. Like nerd was like a real thing. Like you wore glasses and you were the guy that literally the closet that the IT stuff was in, was in the broom closet or where the mop closet is. That's where the IT stuff was. That's where you go. So that's interesting. And and then for me, and I'm interested, I'll follow this with a question. Um, I kind of did it backwards. And I think I've told the story before is built computers 
um, I was working at a large energy company before I had a degree. And then they said, well, you have to have a degree to like get a promotion. I was like, well, where am I going to go from here? <laughs> like, what do you, okay, you want me to go do the checkbox, which I did. And I wasn't a very good student, but I, you know, hey man, uh, oh, here's the joke is when a doctor graduates a med school at the top of the class, you call them doctor. They graduate the bottom of the class, you call them doctor. So <laughs> exactly. Right. I don't want the bottom guy operating yeah, on me. But anyway. yeah, 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 absolutely. But uh, uh, kind of to that, like, how do you think that has evolved now? What are you seeing? Because you have a great probably view now of being in the organization. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, and and it kind of goes back to to Teddy's question before I took us way off topic there. Um, you and me both. But um, <laughs> number one, certification is not all that. It it is a great thing. It is a great way to prove you know what you know. Certification will not get you a job, period. I agree. You get the job. Um, I, I see a number of people. The certified in cybersecurity is a great way to do it. Um, I've served as a mentor to several people. I'm, I'm actually the one on the back end of that that's been answering emails uh, for questions uh, nice. for the learners. And I see a lot of learners that, that email me and say, okay, I finished the course. Now what jobs can I apply for? Yeah, you can apply for any job you want. You didn't have to have that to do that. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Whatever you want to do. Nothing's stopping you. So um, so really, what I see at the Certified in Cybersecurity is it's an awesome tool for me for those who might want to get into security, but they're really not sure. Yeah. It's, you're not committing, you know, six months, um, you know, a year of your life to studying to get this certification. You're not putting tons of money into it. Um, but it's a great way to dip your toes in and see if cybersecurity really is right for you. Yeah, yeah and I'll, I'll even say, obviously... I know a little bit about the security world, tiny bit, and I will say that that never existed. I mean, it's clearly why you made it, is because it is tough. Like, it's like there is no, where do I start? If I had to start the bottom in security, where do I go? You don't, you can't, because there is nothing at that level. Like, yeah. there is, I mean, even if it's the network plus, security plus, that's still leaning towards technical, like I would say technical uh, hands, right? You got to have some type of touch for that. So I wouldn't even consider that the bottom. You have to come in knowing some technical stuff before you can even get there. So I, I think that's great. That's that's uh, that's pretty awesome. Yep, you're right. And I'm often asked to compare those two, and that is very much uh, the comparison to A+, plus, the, yep. the network plus, security plus, those are very much on a technical track. Um, the the CC, as we call it, is not. Um, there is some, There are some technical aspects to it because you have to know a little bit of technology to, to you know, be effective in security, but sure. there's not a ton of it. Um, and that, that is where it comes in. Now, if you want to go back to that technical track, absolutely. Yeah. But, um, but it kind of goes back, and, and I'm going to tell you, my, my number one recommendation, anybody looking for a job in, in cybersecurity, is find the organization you want to work for. Find that organization first. Yeah. Um, don't worry about if there's a security job opening or exactly what that security job is. Find the organization you want to work for. And think about that when you're going into that. You can go into a large corporation, you're probably going to have the opportunity to have a specialized area. You're going to be able to specialize in something um, when you get to that end point in your career, when you get to that point in your career where you want to specialize. Um, look at the small and medium businesses. You're going to get to do a whole lot more stuff. You're going to get a lot bigger picture, um, but you may not be as specialized in those different areas. So I always tell people, first, look at the kind of company you want to look for. Do you want big company, little company, public, private? Do you want to work for government? Um, you know, think about some of those things first and look at it. The reason I say that, every time I've hired somebody in a security role, I've hired internal to the company. Oh yeah, I was gonna help. <laughs> no, I was I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that because um, back when I did corporation, we had some people come in. It kind of works, and I'll talk about the alias here in a minute because it kind of adds to it. Uh, when I worked at companies, and we were in security, and people wanted to move into security. Um, we always hired from inside because what happens is we build a good relationship with them. And it's not about, uh, I will say it, on this one, it's not really about the technical skills. I always say if you can teach, if they're teachable, then it doesn't matter. That's the biggest thing. Or if they're passionate about it and then you start building that relationship and you're more likely to get move into a really good position because you're working with them and you're still making, you're still existing with the company, building rapport, building relationships, and then you'll definitely get it. It, it is just a matter of time. So, so based on that, how many of those folks came from a technical background? Uh, I'd probably say 50%. 50%. Yeah, a lot of them came from what's kind of, I remember I'm talking when I worked at the energy company, uh, from like, I would say te like geology, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of close. They want, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of data stuff, uh, geology and um, 
God, was it accounting, actually? Accounting is huge. There's some weird crossover between accounting and IT people. It, it's weird. You'd be surprised. They, yeah. They'll go in for like a degree in accounting or they're going for a degree in IT and they'll switch. I don't know what that is, but it happens a lot. Huh. Yeah. It's weird. It, it does. And that always surprised me too. And, and that's what I was going to say. And that surprises a lot of people when I say, you know, I, I've hired, you know, every one of my people internally, but I've only hired half of them from IT. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. about the so, so about the same. Yeah. Well, it's kind of that's right. So that's yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, but you have to have them from IT. One, one of the places in a hospital, I hired people from a lab. Okay. And think about it. It's kind of like accounting. Yeah. It is. They're, they're used to a very strict way of doing things, very process oriented, um, and it works very well. So those of you wanting to break into security, I'm going to tell you, ask the right questions. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah, ask the right questions and don't be afraid to talk to people. I had a gentleman reach out to me, wrote this really long LinkedIn thing about how he felt weird reaching out and sorry to be awkward. And it was really long. And I was like, okay, got it. Yeah, dog, let's meet up. Um, so Abby's going to be uh, setting me a meeting up because he wants to learn about cybersecurity. No problem. People don't be afraid to ask um, anybody. I, I think that is a, an intimidation point is, and that's, a, I mean, even this, be like, hey, maybe you should take this test because that'd be a good way for him to get in and start learning about it. And even here, certification test, will, the, the certificate will not get you a job. I would say it will be the knowledge you obtain from that. Um, and I even go back. I had like really bad test anxiety when I was young and I just couldn't. I just, it just, I don't know, I'd get, they put you in the box and there's a camera staring at your face and you're in there for like, well, back at the SANS test for like six hours. Oh my God, that was horrible. And I did eventually over time, but I failed like, <laughs> I, I know I have this company now and that's cool. I failed four certification tests, technical certification <laughs> tests, and I had a technical job for the record. So... Um, so don't don't feel bad. The, the question just keep going. And talking about even hiring, and I can speak for what we do here is, um, I hired a guy here who's in our sock, and he's amazing. He came from the oil field, just doing mud logging, and had zero technical skills. Just, he knew how to turn on a computer, you know, how to double click to launch an app, right? And he's one of our uh, best SOC team members. Um, I would say just recognize that. Don't be afraid to reach out. And if you've got passion, you'll get a job. Because a lot of people want a job in IT, but they, it's really hard to find the passion people, and that's what could separate you. Yep, you are exactly right. Um, I, I I did bring bring a few stats with me today, which aren't as much fun. You know, when you don't have death by PowerPoint. Going. <laughs> uh, but, but I I had to bring the stats with me just because um, I'm no good at stats. So if they're not in front of me, I'm probably lying to you. Um, these are in front of me, and and some of the things I, I pulled some things from our uh, from ISC squared's workforce study. Um, I also pulled, we had a workforce study and we had a manager study. So we had two different ones and I kind of flipped back and forth between those, but I, I do that. And, you know, our whole idea here to talk is how to either hire or get hired. Yeah. So let, let's put these both into perspective and I can use a lot of these same stats to talk about how they work for both the hiring manager and the person who can get hired. Um, you know, once again, we're trying to bridge that gap between those looking for a job and those looking to hire. Yeah. So uh, the more educated both sides get about that, the better off we are. Um, number one, I told you before, talk, think about where you want to be in your career, what kind of organization you want to work for. What showed up on our surveys, the number one industry showing the highest shortages. And I, I don't have the, the stats in front of me, but we're still somewhere about 3 million people short on, um, you know, cybersecurity workers is, is the global estimate. Um, it's a huge number, but what are the industries that we're looking at? Um, and the, these I do have, but I'm not gonna bore you with those stats, but the top industries that say they have the most shortages and they need the most people in cybersecurity are our number one government. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, that, ma that, make, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, the next one's education and higher education. That, that one kind of surprised me. Well, I would I would say because they don't pay very well. Sorry, humans out there, keeping it real. <laughs> yeah, but either, either that or they're shortages. They're looking for more instructors. I'm not sure which one. That oh, okay, is. Yeah. I could see the instructor part. That that makes sense because it is hard to. Um, yeah, it's I yeah, I could totally see that. And I can imagine that. I mean, the stress and weight of having to know, like, hey, you have. I mean, how many college kids? Or how many high schoolers who don't, frankly, necessarily always care about following cybersecurity practices? <laughs> right. I, I got, to, got to take a cool look. We work with quite a few universities. And I was like, hey, can I just like just watch your traffic for a little bit? It is it is a war zone. It is the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life, especially people that, you know, travel from overseas and they're here. 
oh my gosh, the traffic is hilarious. He's like, yeah, man, this thing just blows up all the time. And I was like, so you can't, he's like, we can't lock it down because it's, because it's either community or it's coding or it's, it's, they're talking to their, you know, some other country, but it's probably, they're just talking to their mom on zoom or something. So we just have to leave the world open. I'm like, that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> that is what I always thought. It's like, I can't imagine anything worse than a college network. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so yeah, this is kind of some of the top ones. The one the one stat that really scared me in here, and I know it's it's kind of a place that you all feel a little bit with um, with Alias. The one stat that really scared me of the whole survey, 95%, this one's in front of me. I'm looking at it. Gotcha. Um, 95% of businesses with fewer than 100 employees our small and medium businesses have zero cybersecurity professionals at all. Oh, well. Wow. <laughs> Probably I, doesn't surprise you. I get scared. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Not shocked. Scared and surprised. Two different things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Terrified. Yes. Yeah, I even see the pie charts red, so it's really bad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's danger. <laughs> so, yeah. So, man, I would, I, would say, uh, I would say that's pretty accurate. I would say people don't have a specific security person doing that job i would say and probably hit around let's say 250 230 is when they say we have to have a security person because they hit a certain threshold and they probably put them in some type of compliance and they're like we need a sim you know something because we are super blind um and i'm, I'm not shocked that's but i didn't think it was 95 percent. i didn't think it was that high okay yeah that's crazy yeah because what i mean all you it people out there that also do security jobs bless your heart um that's what happens like Hey, you, you do the networking, but also we need you to like look at these phishing emails and stuff, and 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 then that's that's your and job. Like it's not your job, but it's and job and this and that. So and that's why I think that's the situation we're in, especially people getting ransomware everywhere. It's just uh, well, yeah, the needs there. Yeah, ninety five percent. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, it was crazy, and and you're right. That's definitely the other duties as assigned uh, for a lot of folks. Yeah, <laughs> you signed the contract. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, so, so just a few other stats to kind of look at, and this one's for the managers looking to hire folks. And, and I realize I'm kind of bouncing all over the place here because um, staff but. aren't that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the other ones, okay, managers, what are organizations doing to help bring on more cybersecurity people? So from what this says, managers say that they're providing more flexible working conditions, more work from home, okay, more, more hybrid work. Uh, investing in more training. 64% of our, respond, of our responding managers said they were investing in more training for their employees. Good thing. Interesting. Uh, now that, yeah, that's that's, and, that's interesting. And then, of course, you know, they all say they're bringing on new staff. Of course, that's kind of hard to do. Um, I was kind of interested, went, went a little bit further down, and said that um, 26% of the organizations are, are, are planning to use automation technology in the future. To automate some of the security work. Yeah, mm -hmm. wonder what that would be. That was that was I I, I get it. Maybe I, maybe I'm I'm in that camp. I'm like I get AI and stuff like that, and I get the anomaly stuff. I feel like we can only do that so much because there has to be still some type of action. Because security, anytime we do a move, it's it's intentional, and I would not like a robot to randomly disable an account for right. some reason. Right. Because the humans got to be like, well, what, why was I don't know why the whole network went down. Well, the the robot was like, "Hey, this there's let's just say traffic spike because a company sells tickets, right? And the tickets and the the website's up, so they just lock everything out. I don't know. They, I, I'm maybe no, I, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I, I guarantee you. My my last organization, if I was there and if I if I was disabling accounts with every one of those alerts, yeah, I wouldn't have a job very long. It's hard to fire a robot too <laughs> for any accounts. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the key, right? Hey, there you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it was a robot. I didn't do it. Yeah, it's kind of what's that? It's a uh, it's a uh, circling on LinkedIn. I think it's the uh, post that's like, it's called a uh, oh, um, it's basically like, it's a job you're working for uh, some AI company. It's fake. But it's like pay three hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, we're going to be really precise about the code word, so if stuff gets weird and like the robots are taking over. We need you to unplug everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the, the job requirements is know to how to unplug stuff, no code word, and a lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a lot of patience. A lot of yeah. patience. Yeah, that <laughs> is. Um, so, so to kind of move on to another one, a little bit, a little bit more. You know, I think it's a little bit more interesting, but um, so the organization is looking to hire security people. You're short on security people. You have a lot of turnover. Um, number one thing employees are looking for when they're looking for a new organization. When I, I talked about that, I said it before, look for your organization, not necessarily the job. 
um, is that the organization values and listens to the input of everyone. 60% of folks looking for a job, that's what they want in an organization. Just want to be heard. They just want to be heard. You're exactly right. Yeah. Um, so so managers, definitely something to think of. Um, I, I thought another interesting stat, 74% of these people in this survey said, um, yeah, survey says, ding. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, 74% are satisfied with their jobs. And, and then this, this thing kind of goes goes in a weird direction. 74% satisfaction in their jobs, but there's only 60% satisfied in their organizations. Mm. That's in that. That's that's pretty wild. It, it, it's interesting. I like my job. I like my team a little less. I like my department a little less, and I like my mm-hmm. company even less than that. Man, yeah. That's it's, and and I, only thing I could think how that would click for me, having that background, would be is that I still think companies still consider IT as um, as a cost. Um, if the, if the lights are on, you're doing your job. If they're not, then everyone's not doing their job and no one's paying attention. Why are we wasting money on you? Yeah. Um, that's way more complicated than that. So I think as, as technology, and I think it's, um, kind of a th- threshold of like, it, it is for different age groups, right? Because, um, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I went for a job and, and, and got it by the way, but I'll tell you this, this one owner, uh, asked me. He said, Donovan, I have built a $25 billion company without you. Why do I need you? It's a pretty solid question. That's a, that's a tall order. And then I was like, wow, that, that cut deep. Um, he sees me as a cost, totally. <laughs> and so I was like, hmm, well, if I was a hacker and I broke into your place, um, I would make sure stuff ran better so that way when I'm stealing all your credit cards, you don't know. And then eventually, after the fraud's too large, after six months, uh, Visa and MasterCard are going to pull your, their contracts and you won't have a company. And he said, okay. <laughs> and then I got hired. <laughs> Good enough. Yeah. But, but it is, I think it's, you know, it, but I think, but it's also like who actually grew up with technology, right? You have some, um, um, some uh, older founders. I mean, it makes sense. You have a construction company that, you know, they've been building houses forever and like, wait, well, I need an IT guy. Yeah. Cause we have to do orders. We have to do payroll. Why can't we just do it the way we did it? I, I think that's that's kind of how that builds. But it it I mean to IT for I guess the longest time it was quote a cost center. But I think people are now are seeing that we are moving into a data world. You you don't really have anything. You have data. You store data. You're a data company, whether you like it or not. You're a data company. If you don't have your data, you don't have a company. So I think that we're starting to make that turn. But that that's interesting that uh, they don't like the company the most. <laughs> yeah, and and I'll tell you what what that says to me. It says we've got a lot of work to do to bridge that gap between security and the business. That's really what that says. Yeah, and that's 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 genius. So, even you talked about um, people taking the test that may that aren't in IT or in upper management, even board members just to even take that test would be great intellectual like construction uh, conversation. I, I think that oh, I'm sorry, so that was just a genius way to tie that in for the test. Yeah, that, that was good stuff. Um, okay, so some of the things for you people looking for a job, what are the managers looking for? Sorry, I got the wrong one first. See, I, I can not mess up the stats when I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, number one, what do um, what are the most important qualifications that cybersecurity professionals who are seeking employment have? You know, what do they think their biggest assets are? Number one is strong problem-solving abilities. It's like we said, it's not what you know, it's how you apply it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the curiosity and the eager to learn, asking the right questions. Yeah. Um, your relevant cybersecurity work experience, kind of surprising. Mm. Sure. It's not always, you know, I think we've had the talk that we're, we're both in the camp that yeah. prior experience isn't always necessary, depending on the role. Right. And and I would say even adding to the, I'll, I'll use a different word, uh, which they kind of said there, I'll say the word troubleshooting. Because, man, yeah, that's that intellectual, that's that interesting, I'm kind of, how does that actually work? If someone has that, if you know when something breaks and you've never fixed it and you can like walk the steps to figure something out, you're probably going to be an amazing IT person because that's just what we do. We fix problems we probably haven't seen before. Hopefully we have, or we can go to Google, like, you know, we're coders and that's where we get all our code from. (laughs) But we also can go to the internet for answers and sometimes they're just not there on new stuff. But troubleshooting, that's, that's a, that's a key, that's a key uh, aspect of that. Yeah, and, and the one that surprised me there, um, rounding out the top five, I know I didn't hit all five of them, but rounding out the top five was strong communication skills. 
Yeah. That's what we've been yeah. talking about today. Uh, 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 Communication, bridging that gap. Yeah. yeah. It's really tough for engineers to talk to humans sometimes. Um, we, 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 we are ha always try to help facilitate that with, with our team because it is tough because they're in like, they almost live in a different dimension and they're trying to explain <laughs> to someone who is in finance about the dimension, what they found in such a dimension. So for them to communicate that, it is, it is really tough. So I would say yes. And I mean, even even for us, I would say that's kind of where we are, where we are in our uh, our careers is we are we're really good communicators, and and that's that's why a lot of advocacy we miss a lot of uh, super smart technicians um, that do like to just stay in the room with the lights off and drink Mountain Dew, which is still accurate and true. Probably isn't not Mountain Dew anymore; it's more like diet Mountain Dew, try to think of other energy Red drinks, Bull. Red Bull, Red Bull. Um, but uh, yeah, the communication is huge. Um, we had some of our, our staff go through some communication classes or even writing classes, um, which is great um, because you no, know, when you do technical work, you got to tell someone how you did it and it, you're typically not going to tell them face to face. So you should probably figure out how to write that down and make it a complete sentence. And that sounds like, and I'm speaking of myself, I went a long way to figure out how to write what I'm doing. Um, I went back to college and uh, I got a... <laughs> I got a degree in like human resources, which is hilarious. It, it is a bachelor of science, so I say that, whatever. But it taught me how to write and how to talk to people. Um, like, hey, do a presentation on this thing. So I had to talk to them. And it was really tough for me. So if you do have a tough time talking to people, that is totally normal. I had the same problem. It took me forever to get out of that. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. Just got to practice, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so one of the other things that I found here, hiring managers and practitioners both think the most demand most in demand skills are right now what, what do you think those are the most in skills like the, the most in demand skills in cybersecurity right now mm. man that's kind of hard uh i mean it, it's for, so wide open I, I was like man for <laughs> for us uh man i would tell you there's a there's a huge gap uh like threat hunting um for us it's really hard to find some really good threat hunters um Pen testers are getting pretty thin. I say recently we've been pretty good about pulling them in, but um, pen testers are getting tough. So we're starting to reach nation, like reach uh, through the United States now. Um, that'd be for us. So I think my, I'm kind of in a bubble, though. It's hard to find pen testers. I thought they were a dime a dozen. Well, everyone is a pen tester. I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, my, it, it's my joke, right? Because everyone wants to be a pen tester, and that's cool. But it's really hard to find. So what happens is, Everyone gets a career in IT, and then they won't, they'll be, because it's all about kind of money, so it is, use help desk, desktop support, network, server admin, and they get to a point where they're comfortable, and they haven't considered security, so they won't make that jump. We had a few people that we fired on, we had, we kind of made them make that jump to security, because I knew they'd be good pen testers, because I know how technology works. So when someone says, I'm a pen tester, I took a, you know, I took a test, and I have a certification, I'm like, that's great. Here's the computer, now. I'm going to draw you a network. Now break into that network. And then they're just like, this is not a lab anymore. I was like, this is real pen testing. We don't even know what we're going into. All you know is we're going to plug in the laptop and you just have to do the thing. And they're like, do I have any other follow-up questions? Like, nope, just plug in. And hopefully you get a network. Network, uh, when you plug in your, in your laptop, if you don't have a network light, do you even know how to troubleshoot that? Like, if is it the cable? And that's when you kind of go through that process, so. That, that's for us. It, it's hard to find uh, pen testers with that depth of knowledge. Yep. Okay, so I, I kind of loaded the question. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, fe I felt like that was like, oh, man, that was it. But, hardball. But the response is actually <laughs> totally different, different direction. Yeah. Um, but so the, the top two items, and, and these, these both show up for managers and job seekers alike. Number one, cloud computing. Okay. Cloud security. Yeah. Um, is a number one on both. Um, number two, risk assessment. Risk analysis, risk management. Yeah. So, so we see cloud computing very technical, especially when you're dealing with multiple things in the cloud. And um, you know, the cloud's great and all, but it just adds complexity to what you used to have in house. It, it does, um, especially when you're trying to protect it. But risk assessment, and that's one area that, while technical knowledge is helpful, yeah, isn't always necessary. And a lot of folks don't think about that in risk management. Now, if you've been in finance, if you've been in, um, you know, some of those other organizations that are very risk heavy, yeah, um, you're more familiar with that. If you haven't been in those, um, you don't realize what a big part risk management plays in cybersecurity. Yeah. And it's really not that technical. I, 
We'll let that ride for a second. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was going to say um, the risk. Actually, I didn't think about that, but that makes total sense because um, I think that's it's a weird because the companies will typically hire someone in risk, but they don't do the IT side because they're more focused would make sense on the business functioning, whatever that function is, whether it's selling, you know, some type of banking information or whatever, you know, mortgages. But that crossover is very rare. And if it is, even the, you know, the, the big audit guys, the, the big four, um, their IT auditors don't really know anything about IT, which is good and bad. Um, it's good they don't. But even when they come in to do the audits, that technology piece doesn't go. I mean, they're kind of reading from a script. So I could I could totally see that. That's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I thought that was that was an interesting insight huh. into it. Um, so to look back at things, and, and they one of the survey questions here was, what's what's the top reasons why you got into cybersecurity? And and topping out our survey and actually tied for the top spot was was career advancement opportunities and high demand for skills. There's a lot of demand, so I'm going to get into this. Yeah. See some of that. I'm not going to tell you that's the right reasons to get into it. Um, I want to bring more people into it. Um, the, the highlighted ones down here, which which I really like, are the ability to work in a continuously evolving field. Oh. And and that's one that I really like, and that's one that I will warn people that, that aren't familiar with cybersecurity but think they might want to get into it. Yeah. Is um, the only thing that's consistent is change. And things will change, and they'll change quickly, and they won't stop changing. Yep. And I, I've seen that in almost you know, almost 30 years in the industry now, and I guarantee you what I do today is nothing like what I did 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, it's completely different, yet we're still fighting a lot of the same problems we had then. Um, I, I'm not gonna, one of these days, skip over that one. Complicated. Yeah, one of these days we'll figure out how to patch a machine. <clears throat> That's yeah. fine. Yeah, or, or, or get people to quit writing down their passwords or using simple <laughs> passwords, you name it. Um, I like so, my sticky notes, okay? <laughs> yeah. You know, sticky notes are great. You can use them as long as it's a secure password. You know, as long as you secure your sticky note, I'm good with it. Just right. don't leave it under the keyboard. Yes. It's under the mouse. That, that was... Okay. <laughs> you made me stop and think about that one now. You, you don't get much work done, do that. <laughs> right. Her mouse is always broken. I'm like, why is it not moving? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so we, we kind of talked uh, back at the beginning a little bit about certifications. Yeah. Um, you know, 96% of the people that responded to the survey did have at least one certification. Um, there is a certain point in your career where it may be necessary to do. It may be necessary to get past the gatekeepers. Um, I do want to recommend hiring managers. Um, please don't require certifications for your positions unless they are truly required. Right. Yeah. Uh, my recommendation there is always the certifications recommended. If you don't already have it and you're the right person, we're going to help you get it. Yeah. You know, if it's that important to us. Um, don't always require that coming in because you will be excluding a lot of great people that want to get into the field and do want to learn and, and are very capable of getting those certifications if, if that's something you or a regulator or somebody else requires. Um, but that's my number one thing for the hiring managers. You know, don't overinflate that thing. Um, help those people that really want to do that get those certifications and don't necessarily require those up front. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I would even say from my side is um, I would even speak on the degrees as well. Um, we don't require any of that for the technical jobs, a degree or a certification, and which honestly has been amazing for us because someone who was working at a company for 15 years and uh and networking and they said he can't move his job unless he ha he gets his degree and he's like well i'm literally been working here i don't know why i need a degree now to work here and from that point put a lot of pressure so we've been able to capture uh, a we we could get to capture a wider net because that requirement is doesn't exist what, what what matters here is i go back to passion do you enjoy it do you like it and i think that's that's really what's excelled uh, us on that so that's again yeah my world there yeah you're you're exactly right and and the other thing we've got to realize as a hiring manager, not everybody wants to be a CISO. Yeah. You know, not everybody wants to do that stuff. Um, some people are absolutely fine, you know, working in the SOC and monitoring those alarms. That's what they want to do for a career. And do they need tons of certifications and degrees and everything else um, to do certain jobs? No, they don't. Yep. Um, and, and that's just fine. Well, and it kind of comes down to, like, the time you need to actually get those certifications or get a four-year degree 
on top of the cost you need to actually take the tests for the certifications and take, you know, pay for college courses and all of that, that's a pretty big barrier of entry as well. Yep. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And, and I mean, I mean, you know, spoiler alert, um, certifications and, um, and degrees, uh, certifications prove you can pass a test and degrees prove that you can, uh, change the information around and put it into the format the professors want to read it in. That's about it at the end of the day. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. They're great. I, I, you know, I, yeah. I, I've appreciated every one of them. Um, what they really do and the best thing they do is they boost your self-confidence. So for those folks that do those, um, you know, whether it's a degree, whether it's a certification, it's going to boost your self-confidence and that's going to show when you're in an interview too. Whether or not you're, you're digging into the technical details of things, whether or not you're doing those things, um, it's kind of irrelevant because once you pass that milestone and you do that, you realize, well, wait a minute, maybe I do know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, I, and I'd say just kind of echo wrapping this back up is in cybersecurity, it's not uh, certifications and degrees because you're not going to learn anything in those fields that when you're actually doing the cybersecurity job, it's not. The best thing you can learn from that is probably just communication, I would say, from the college side and I guess kind of how the world works in the adult world, my finger quote, adult world. world. Um, but the technical stuff is, is not there. Um, I will say some of the Votex actually do some sort of really good hand on, hands-on stuff. Um, which has been helpful and it's been a really good pool for us to grab from. But, um, yeah, if you're looking into it, I mean, I, I love the entry test. If you're interested in that, then, um, don't be daunted or, or intimidated by needing a certification or anything like that. And I feel like it's not just us on, on the podcast. I'm hearing that from other managers because they're like, man, this, the, the workforce is so thin. I'm just like, well, take off the degree requirement. And they're like, well, I don't know if we can do that. I was like, you should ask. And they're like, oh, they said we could do that. And then the organization I'm talking about, um, Actually, in North Texas, they did that just because no one ever asked if they could take it off. It would just by default on there because most of the positions at this place, you had to have a degree in like engineering, but they made for all IT jobs, they withdrew that and their market opened up and they were able to get the employees they were looking for for like three years. It's crazy. Yep. So, yeah, that that is amazing. Um, I, I also want to offer a few more thoughts here, um, both from the job seeker and from the manager's perspective. Um, first of all, those managers, you're out there hiring folks for your team. Number one, look at what skills your team lacks. Fill those skills. I see, I, I have seen a ton of times, especially in small businesses, managers are looking to hire somebody that looks just like them. They want to hire a carbon copy. Um, absolute mistake. Yes. Get, get out of your comfort zone. Hire, hire the person that will challenge you. Hire the person that will that will take you to the next level, that will fill your gaps, that can fill in in the areas that you're uncomfortable with. Yeah. Um, look for those. That, that's number one uh, for me on the managers when you're going out looking for help. Um, and then on the job seekers, realize what core skills you lack. Um, you're, you're starting out in cybersecurity. There's probably a lot of those. Yeah. Um, number one, don't be afraid to ask. Um, I can I can kind of tie that back around to our certified in cybersecurity. I've told people a lot of times, is, it gonna, is that... Is that certification going to teach you everything you need to know about cybersecurity? Oh, no way. Yeah. Um, but what it will do is it will equip you to ask the right questions. Um, I said a few times, ask the right questions. And that's exactly what that'll do. It'll help help the terminology, help with the thought processes, help see how risk management ties into cybersecurity, and help to ask the right questions. And when you're in that interview, asking the right questions is probably going to get you the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. not, it's not always the answers, it's the questions you ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. No, I think that's fantastic. I mean, all of the career advice I've ever heard is you always have to ask questions because if, you know, in the interview, you don't ask questions and if you're in the job, then you don't know how to do something. You're not going to ask questions or you see something that could be improved. You're not going to bring it up or have that kind of initiative to actually talk about different things. Um, so I think that's fantastic advice. And I think so far this episode has been amazing. Is there anything that Donovan or myself have and asked you about or anything that you wanted to talk about that you didn't get the chance to yet today? Um, I, you know, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. Um, I, I think we could probably go on for a few more hours. Um, but I'm pretty sure everybody would get tired of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think I'll go ahead and wrap it up at this point. Um, and, and just saying, you know, go out there, do what's right for you. 
Um, if you want to get into cybersecurity, absolutely do it. That CC certification is a great way to dip your toes in, see if you want to do that. Um, and don't be afraid to say, no, that's not what I want to do. But go into it with the eyes wide open and, and know that it's okay to ask questions. It's definitely okay to admit you don't know everything. Yeah. And, and I would say my last piece is there's a lot of groups that meet up in the area, in Oklahoma specifically, and also I can speak for the Texas area as well. Um, just look up meetups for cybersecurity or technology. Um, also, if you want a job, that's a good place to go because people that I know, including myself, go to these because I'm looking for people to hire as well. So, Awesome. Donovan, Chad, thank you both so much for joining me on the episode. Thanks, Thanks Teddy. Like our show? Listen to full episodes on Spotify, Apple, or anywhere else where you get your podcasts. And if you're interested in watching the video, you can find that on our YouTube or on secureafpodcast.com. 